I've hit recording. Three, two, one. Hey guys, it's Viger. She's still here, and here we Hello. are, finally at the end of the road here for at least season one, because we know we've got season two greenlit. Well, actually, in production, and wasn't season three like greenlit that I'm hearing? Mm, I think. Wouldn't put it past. I don't know. Them. I know when she, when Visit Pop has originally pitched this idea, she wanted four seasons to tell all of. Has been hotel story. Fair enough. I wouldn't surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if season three has been greenlit with the overwhelming success that it is. But here we are with the final episode of season one, and I don't think we need to dilly dally any further than we have to because it is finally time for us to react to episode eight of season one of Has Been Hotel. The show must go on. So with that being said, finally. Let's. We are going to have one climactic battle to just wrap this <laughs> whole season up. And I am all here for it. But the problem is, who's going to die? It's the thing that we're... <laughs> oh, Alistair, I cannot wait to watch you get fucked. <laughs> Go to hell, Vox. I wish my mom was here to see this. The cannibals seem ready to fight. Mm. Are we? Fear not, damsel. I shall have the superb <laughs> of combat. What in the hell are you supposed to be? General Pinches reporting for duty. I'll turn those rat scallions into soldiers in no time at all. Thank you, Pen. What can I do to help? I'm She's got to two rats around. Seeds fortifications. Reinforce the southern wall. Create a moat around the perimeter to stop a ground assault. How about this? You see an angel? Stab it. <laughs> <laughs> see an angel. Oh, no. God. Wrong angel. No. no. <laughs> Why is that not like your mentality? <laughs> point is, point in direction. Weird animal. How are you drinking? You're screwed, you flathead. You had an ample opportunity to say I'm so proud. <laughs> and but then there's Nifty, so I love not dying. Drinks. Had an opportunity for Charlie to say I'm so proud of all of you. In the pride ring would make sense. to you <laughs> just trying to understand your <laughs> twisted little mind <laughs> and you're not off snorting a line off some hunks abs eh, you fucked one cannibal pool boy you fucked them all <laughs> yes you have changed hey charlie said live tonight however we want it so pour me a fresh one and let's get to living 
<laughs> they make such a cute stuff. Yeah. yeah. I want to tell you that I... I love... I'd love to wish you good luck in the battle head. Okay. You are... Have always been a worthy opponent with the most brilliant explosive contraptions I've ever seen. Uh, thanks? Anyway, I guess... <laughs> please don't die tomorrow, okay, bye. Your Riz is very Aww. weak there, Pentius. Totally tap that. Don't be gross. Guys, you know... I hear he's got two dicks. Huh. Huh! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just don't look at the pig. Don't look at the pig because then it's going to get sad. I'm so scared. What if we lose? You've already done so much. So many lives you've changed. I know this beat. I know this beat. Do they even have currency in heaven? I is that even so. is that even needed? Heaven. Yeah. Why would you need cash? I know. I mean, hell has cash, but it's, it's hell, hell. So yeah. Here they come. Get ready, everyone. We fight together. Fifties <laughs> 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 is <laughs> need to stab. <laughs> Love their outfit. Here we go. Let the slaughter begin. Now just go full. She's angry. Yeah. All angelic weapons, fire at will. Hey, yelling while fighting doesn't help. <laughs> She's just making sure. She's doing the double tap. Love you, Steve. Love the optimism. Still trying to focus. Yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> He's the strong one. God, keep it in your pants, dude. Lord, you should 
no better than anyone what a soul can accomplish when they take charge of their own fate. Mm. <laughs> It's better than what Adam calls you. <laughs> she's sorry, sorry, sorry. No, she's only using a shield. Nifty just a thumbs up. We aren't gonna last long unless we do something about him. Of course. Well, I'm trying to fight here. You out of your fucking mind? Yes. <laughs> okay. Miss Cherry Bomb, I love you. Remember me. That was kind of hard. <laughs> yes. Activate thrusters and charge the death ray. Oh boy. Oh boy. That could have been ugly. Whoa. That was quick. I'm so sorry. Just like that. Yeah, this snap. is this is it. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's our demon princess. <laughs> oh, look who thinks they're badass now. The traitor came to die. Come on, Maggie, you can take her. Yeah. Good. Cat fight in there. Surprise, bitch. Uh. Risking your immortal life for sinners? That's some crazy shit. Even for Lucifer's brat. These sinners are my family. These sinners are my family. Do you <sighs> hear yourself? You should have stayed in your place, girly. Oh, there we go. That's princess of hell to you, pig. The fuck? That hurts. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you always were weak. Mm. So, I'll spare you the pain of seeing your demon. There you go. Do it then. Correct your mistake. Seriously, you're pathetic. You know that? Ready to die rather than accepting mercy? No. Live. Live knowing that you only do because I let you. Yeah. 
It's a better torture on all honesty. Oh! God! I was wondering when he'd show up. <laughs> yes! Sorry I wasn't here sooner, sweetie. <sighs> okay, seriously. How many of you oh. do I have to fight? Oh, I'm the only one that matters. See, you mess with my daughter, and now I am going to fuck you. Well, this just got in. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? <laughs> Wait, what did I say? <laughs> What you been up to since Eden? I gotta say, you really let yourself go, buddy. <laughs> you judging me? You're the most hated being in all of creation. <laughs> well, your first wife didn't seem to hate what I had to offer. <laughs> the second, <laughs> God, he is still just a goober to the end. Uh-huh. Enough with you! This is one of the two most being, like, powerful oh. people What do you think? You're in my house, bitch! <laughs> whoa, whoa, Dad. He's had enough. <sighs> How's mercy taste, you little bitch? <laughs> no. You don't get to end this. I'm fucking Adam! I'm the fucking man, and you're just some fucking clown or something. Well, let's make a douchebag. Yeah. All of mankind came from these fucking nuts. You all should be worshiping me, you ungrateful. And you've been killing all of them. Fucking losers. Whoa. Hey, you got something sticking out of here. Oh, don't tell me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh my Christ! It's over. Take your little friends and go home. <laughs> Please. Retreat. All exorcists fall back. Oh boy. Who's up for pancakes? Really? <laughs> really? I mean... Joy. And I'm... Nobody gives a shit who you are, Tom. <laughs> Extermination day is cancelled. Charlie Morningstar managed to fend off the angelic attack with more than just nice words. <laughs> in an unseen turn of events, our demonic head honcho Lucifer stepped in to save his daughter's ass in the last moment. We're also hearing reports that Adam, leader of the angelic legions, first man and totally fuckable bad boy, has been slain by a filthy <laughs> <laughs> Charlie told me to stab, so I did. Anyway, congrats to Charlie and Andrew not being totally fucking useless for once. <laughs> Damn. Oh, there's Kiki. Kiki. There. It's oh, it's okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> it's like, please. <laughs> True, true. Now I know it. For your 
story has just begun. You can't quit now. Hell, you owe it. There's still damage to be undone. You've changed my mind. You've touched their hearts. Found the good and souls gone bad. The stage is wrecked. The crowd is gone. But by God, Charlie, the show, it must go on. We can do this. We can build it. Best hotel that you've ever seen. Parts the bedrooms, we can fill it. With more sinners than you can dream. It starts with you, you know it's true. Fulfill your destiny. So long as I've got all of you with me. <laughs> to build a hotel, I think we need some brick and lumber. Good thing we're in hell. Check out this little magic Oh good, he's a Kingdom Hearts fan. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on. That's we'll go. It will go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> Make the best of what's in room, new I like that you tear up. After the battle, masterless cattle, overlords hanging by a thread. With a bit of bravado, maybe tomorrow we'll be atop the heap. Well, the rest of hell's pissing. Alistair's missing, fled with his tail between his legs. Nature of wars. Don't think he's gonna be missing for too long, though. <laughs> the future of hell belongs to the bees. <laughs> Speak of the devil. There's a chill in the air, and I barely escaped being killed by a hair. Great Alistair Altruist died for his friends. Sorry to disappoint. That is not where this ends. I'm hungry for freedom like never before. The constraints of my deal surely have a back door. Once I figure out how to unclip my wings, guess who will be pulling all the strings? Oh boy. <laughs> ah, this guy. <laughs> is threatening the very foundation of heaven and if you want to stay here you're going down there and stopping that bitch you understand me Lilith why do you end it there what <laughs> okay now comes the discussion part because there's a lot that needs to be broken down here. First off, though, for uh, for your own viewing pleasure, though, uh, we're gonna back it up to here, just for the, just so that you get a good look at get a good look at it. There you go. I'm just gonna leave that. I'm just gonna leave that there for you. I want it. I want it. I want it. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, uh, Mina is a massive Kingdom Hearts fan, so even the slightest reference, if it is, isn't even meant to be that, Kiki not turning into a Keyblade would have been a missed opportunity. But glad to see that we got it. So, oh, uh, where do we begin with this, though? There is a lot that needs to be broken down, not just with this episode in particular, but things that are implied. Um... I mean, do you want to start somewhere specifically with uh, this? Like anywhere in particular that you wanted to get a good look at? Uh, really just like the ending. Like why is Lilith in heaven? Why'd she make a deal with whoever? Uh, who is, who is Alistair shackled to? It's probably Lilith, but... I uh, I'm starting to have second thoughts about that, though. 
I'm starting to have second thoughts. Like, perhaps he's doing a double deal. Follow me on this one. Um, so I truly honestly believe that Alistair does have a deal with Lilith. And that is why he's at the hotel. That is why he is helping Charlie. Yeah. I, I've, I'm wholly on board with that idea. But now getting a better look at things, especially during his little number here. I'm just going to skip a little, little, he- little bit ahead here. This. This is something that's been nagging at the back of my head ever since episode 5, more or less. Alistair's more, biggest color palette, like the rest of Hell, has always been red. Yeah. So why is most of his powers from a sickly green source? That's a sharp contrast. Like, literally, red and green are sharply contrasting colors. They're polar opposites of each other on the color spectrum. Yeah, so why would he be pulling his from a green source unless all the power that he has that makes him so strong is coming from whatever he made a deal with. Because as Husk had said, he's not he's on a leash. And what happened when Alistair made that leash manifest? It was a green chain. Not a red chain. To symbolize that that would be what he's got going. Whenever the, And when the deal was struck with Charlie, it was green. I really think He's he's bargained with something old. Something something that even Lucifer might have a problem dealing with. What do you think? I I definitely think that it's still the, that he made a bargain with. Yeah, I I I, f- um, I fully agree with that bit, but there is the potential that he has a second deal with his soul specifically much in the same way that charlie made a deal with him but didn't sell her soul he did that with lilith so he's like he even said in his he even said in his some of the lyrics here bound by the constraints of his deal yeah which is i want to say he's referring to lilith's deal specifically there but what would be the nature of this theoretical green deal, I'll call it? I have no idea. Because what's, what screams to me about this is... Um, what screams to me about this is green is always... This sickly green, that's always like a color that you think of when you think of something eldritch. Something old, Lovecraftian, sort of like a Cthulhu sort of old god. Mm-hmm. You wonder if somehow Alistair made a deal with something eldritch in nature. Something that defies heaven and hell specifically. Something older, like what came before. It's an interesting prospect, and that would have some certain details and implications mm-hmm. going forward. Or maybe it's because of the fact of uh, he's to spread chaos. Let's say let's he's just here to raise hell and cause chaos all over the place. But Charlie's innate goodness is getting into him, whether he will acknowledge it or not and that's why he's kind of having a mild panic attack at the end here it's like i'm supposed to be the one in charge why am i losing control to her of all people and what does he mean by once i figure out how to unclip my wings one wouldn't think that like is he trying to put them back on (laughs) Or these new ones that are more or less acting like shackles to him? There's some serious implications going forward with that. Yeah. But I want to talk about something interesting, though, going forward. Uh, 
our good boy that has proven Charlie <laughs> correct. I had a feeling that something was up with that. You just don't unceremoniously just blip him out of existence like that. Just like Adam, a snap of his fingers, and not only him and his egg boys, but the entire airship just bamps out of there yeah. unceremoniously. That seemed like a little like, wait, what? I also find it. I also find it heavily ironic that, as far as like Judeo-Christian interpretations of like the Book of Genesis, uh, what was the thing that tricked Eve to begin with? The apple. Who gave the, her the apple? That would be Lucifer. And what was Lucifer probably disguised as? as oh my god. <laughs> I find it heavily ironic that the first soul, the first sinner to be redeemed is a serpent. <laughs> and that's not even like him manifesting at the gates and then Peter letting him in. No, something. He, he, he bamped into like headquarters. Yeah, he bamped right in there. Something let him in. Like instantaneously. You know, for a fact, Adam didn't do it. You know for a fact he didn't. And it wasn't like an accidental, oops, this is what happens when I smite someone like this. Alright. So, I kind of wanted to, like, bring this up in the last, uh, not last episode, but the episode before that. Yeah. We where can, they we have can, the meeting with hell. With we can heaven, do, I mean. We can do this whole, like, overview of the series. So, whatever you're thinking, go for it. Go for it. If Charlie had a meeting with heaven... Why wasn't God there? I mean, why yeah. wasn't the big man himself there? I mean, yeah, that is the question and a half. But then again, like Sarah said, they don't know what the credentials are. They just know when someone arrives. So it's like, well, who's making that call? And now, case in point, who made Pentius's call? Yeah. Was that God saying, you know what? I'm shaking things up. I'm letting probably the most unqualified sinner ever, both aesthetically and just the fact in general, I'm letting this guy in. I would like to think all of his eggs made it too. They're too innocent yeah. not to just not come with him. I, 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 got the boss. Yeah. I just think they'd find a way. Not even like full redeem. They just they just show up. They're just there now. And like, wait, where the frick did you guys come from? The door was left open. I don't know. Freaking. <laughs> but it's just like. <laughs> but now, now we have a foot in the door. Now we have a point proven. It was an angel that was the case study. That wasn't the one that got through. It was the, let's face it, the afterthought. The guy who's just saying, I'm buying drinks for everyone. I'm buying drugs for everyone. I'm having I'm sex, having with, sex everyone. with everyone. <laughs> and he's the one that immediately gets in. Because he made a sacrifice. He threw his life on the line for the people that he cares about. And I wholeheartedly believe that is like the one-way ticket to heaven. In my book, personally. If you truly, honestly, like, put your life behind everybody else like put everyone else ahead of you and think to yourself i'm doing this for them not for me because i care about them and if you're willing to just throw your life away for that matter wholeheartedly knowing of the consequences i feel as though that's a really good case for redemption there mm -hmm. that is a very good case but now i'm seeing a possible like b plot that takes place in heaven as we have now a has-been division that'll form in heaven. Needless to say, I think through Pentius, this is how Molly gets introduced proper. Probably. Emily's gonna, like, jump at this. She's already, like, you saw her, like, <laughs> literally, like, literally, you just get a good look at Sarah. She's freaking the hell out. <laughs> she is like, oh! so excited. But it's like, I don't know if Emily's just excited, like, ooh, new person, or point proven, but Sarah's having an absolute existential crisis right now. 
Because now she has to figure this out. She can't just expel Pentius. Can't do that. No way, shape, or form should that be allowed. Because then that makes her a massive freaking hypocrite. But yeah, I could see like a ha- I could see a has been division forming between Emily, Pentius, and possibly Molly, and that's how we get her and Angel Dust to finally reconnect. But what were you What were you um, going to say? I don't know. Idea was there for a second, then bamped out of existence. Just like just like Pentius. <laughs> It'll come back to you in however okay. long it took to feed okay. them. <laughs> okay. I kind of, I kind of have the thought again. Um, so, um, I don't know how to put this into words. He didn't arrive at the gate to Saint Peter. No. He he didn't see the little twink. No, he didn't see Peter. He was just bamfed here. So. But again, who let him in? Who just like pulled I have a rank? Feeling it might have been Emily having to work something out with someone. Who? I don't know. It definitely was not Sarah. No, she wouldn't let him in. I don't think Emily would have the jurisdiction or the power to do so. So again, it would have to be somebody above Sarah's, uh, specifically well, Sarah, but who would that be? Maybe, maybe it was Sarah because Emily wasn't doing her job, and Sarah doesn't want to want Emily to fall like Lucifer. Yeah. Because according to Sarah, Emily is supposed to spread joy throughout the human world. Throughout Earth, yeah. That is her responsibility as a seraphim. And how was she supposed to do that when she was burdened by, oh, there's souls that want to be redeemed being tortured and killed down in hell? Yeah. She's basically, Sarah's of the mindset of just out of sight, out of mind. Don't worry about it. Just accept that things are the way that they are and we're not going to change anything about that stagnation is the death of everything let's be brutally honest here sometimes you just have to (laughs) quite literally in Pentius's case crack a few eggs to get shit going I just still find it so heavily ironic that it's the serpent that gets in first (laughs) that is such a good twist on the on the story Okay, but he was pure boy. I know, he's such a good noodle. So it shows sure, that... he just made, like, death rays and stuff. Who cares? He was a good boy. Put that behind us. Did he explicitly target that at anybody in particular? Occasionally. <laughs> but let's put that behind us. Look what he did in his final moments. He changed. Who's to say nobody else can? And that's the whole point of it. But I... I do have to point out the idea that it's like, where where is God in this situation? The idea that St. Peter actually exists does give credence to the idea that Jesus might be around somewhere. Just by just by how that, that is whole set up. You do, do you know anything about Peter as far as like biblical terms are concerned? Not really, no. So... Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. I know disciples. he's like, yes, you get into heaven. <laughs> well, no, he was originally, as the Bible, as the New Testament would describe him, he, formerly known as Simon Peter, he was one of the first disciples Jesus met. He was like basically the big guy, the the top of the the top of the pack. He was like, if the disciples had a specific leader amongst themselves, it was Peter. He was more or less the face of the group. Okay. And there's the the classic he's he's he does a lot of different things. Like when Jesus is walking on water in the middle of the storm, he calls Peter out to him to walk over to him. It was Peter that denied Jesus three times before his crucifixion. It was Peter who was more or less said, "Upon this rock, I will build my church." Peter was is technically the first pope. And a bit of show of dedication as to how Peter operated when he was inevitably crucified 
for his beliefs. It is said that he demanded that he be crucified upside down so that he doesn't die the same way that Jesus did. So he's kind of a big deal. And the way that it's described going forward, he is now the gatekeeper of heaven. But every pope since Peter continues his lineage. So if Peter is here in the Helivers, I have very strong credence that to some capacity Jesus is as well. Because you can't tell Peter's story without Jesus. Unless you're just saying Ixne on the Gise or whatever and just he everybody knows Peter's the gatekeeper. So we're just sticking him at the front door because people will recognize it. But I feel as though with a show that takes so much time with details and other references throughout, that's a pretty big reference to just ignore, mm-hmm. if you ask me. So it kind of gives credence to like, well, maybe Jesus said, you know what, Pentius is just going to go there because I'm a because I'm a trendsetter. These seraphim are acting more like Pharisees, and I had a real hankering for just ruining their stuff. Stuck in their ways, I'm here to break the mold. And what better way to break heaven's mold than just throw a snake in their midst and just watch them panic? Yeah. Yeah, this is your problem. (laughs) And it's a big problem going forward for them. I had a feeling though going going back into this. I had a feeling that that what that Adam was just wearing a mask, that it was just a helmet that he was wearing. Cuz it's like that that just that looks too demonic and impish for an agent in heaven. Mhm. It's just like I don't see that being just him, but the fact that underneath he's just what appears mm-hmm. to be just a very tired man. Not I just... thought his, like, human design would be a little bit more than just, yeah, he looks like a regular guy you'd see out in the streets. Maybe that's the point, because he's always hyping himself up. I'm the original dick and everything. And the fact that underneath the mask, he's just any other ordinary schmuck. Like, I look like this guy. Like, literally, remove that, <laughs> remove the hat and everything. I'm basically just him. I'm going to curse everybody's (laughs) screens right now because I physically took the hat off to prove a point. So it's just like the fact that he just looks like any other normal person shows that there wasn't really anything special about him, even if he was just the first man. What does that technically mean in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the greater cosmos and everything? You were the first man and you f***ed it up. (laughs) And you continue to screw it up. Over and over and over again. But I need I need to get a good look at something else, though. Uh, specifically at this point before she, when she falls. I'll get back a little bit here. Throws Adam to the ground, and then... You come at me and my we get a good freaking look <laughs> at demon form Lucifer. Pin that up right next to Demon Form, Beelzebub, Mammon, and Osmodeus. We've got our fourth sin going full demon mode. I like how his halo turns into just a snake with the apple. Mm-hmm. Charlie looking absolutely freaking badass there. Why does this scream you and me energy when somebody gets on both of our tits? God, that is just, that is horrifying to look at in all the right ways. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, you've really right pissed off the royal family of hell. And it's like that, you're going to get what you deserve at that point. So, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I really, really want to see Lucifer interact with the other sins going forward even if it's like just an unnamed unspeaking role but his character just is there i want to see that happen i want all seven sins just there speaking of other sins we are getting more uh hell of a boss 
Yeah. On Valentine's Day. Okay, good. Good. We, oh, that's, that is so perfect, though, because at Mass this week, we were friendly reminded that on the 14th of, uh, for the Valentine's Day, that is technically Ash Wednesday as well. Lent begins that day. You can't write this. You can't write this. Oh, that, that lines up too perfectly. <laughs> it's scarily perfect truth be told but yeah is there anything else that you wanted to bring up at all or maybe talk about with a certain with a certain somebody who's just chilling on the beach why is why 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 what deal did she make that says you can be in heaven so long as the act the extermination happens because technically speaking she's demonic like everybody else down in hell so if anything she was fair game too so what if the deal was she silences her voice and she and her family get to live i so the extermination only happens for sinners. They don't go over, they don't go after the natural born, uh, like the imps, the succubi, and all the other yeah, demons. That they are don't there. go after any one of those. They just go after the sinners and overlords. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, but since that would technically classify, that would technically classify Lilith. Take all of them, mm. save me. Once a year, you can kill as many. And in return, I get to stay in but, heaven and live. But for what? if that's the case, then why? But that would have to have been made seven years ago when she got... Uh, when she disappeared. But the exterminations have been going on for however long. Yeah. So that can't be the reason for it. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just irked we don't even get like a voice confirmation with who this is. Who plays her? We know who it is. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't know who plays Lilith. I don't know either, but we know it's Lilith. Yeah, it's like, who's, who's Lilith's voice? Like, who do we get like a comparison of that? Like, I just look into the nitty gritty of all that stuff, but... Oh, it's just, there's a lot of different, and I, I can't help but also think to myself, there's another little inkling in the back of my mind that is just like, there was, there was potential here for something. I'm looking back at this in retrospective and truth be told, I really don't think Adam should have died. There was... I don't think so either. There was there's there was potential there for some banter between Adam and Lilith. Former uh, the former couple, the first man and the first woman. There's some wonderful dialogue that could have been done between these two. But weren't but wasn't. I'm thinking to myself, what if it was loot that could have been killed? As our, like, our main cast member, our recurring character that would bite the dust. And that her death shakes Adam a l too much to realize, wait, things are not going in my favor, pull back. And now he's got to regroup and figure out how he's going to make this work. And I'm thinking to myself, that's when you can introduce Abel into the mix. Adam's son... The one that was the loyal one. The murdery. Whereas his brother Cain, the murderer, is very much down in hell. But Adam recruiting Abel into the mix and basically making him like his right hand man. There was potential there. 
There is potential there. Or maybe Loot can pull that card now that she's in charge. Mm-hmm. She ne- she can't have the first man, so she'll have the second man. But then you've also got to... And again, I'm looking into... She was named before already. Where's Eve in all of this? Where's Adam's second wife? Depending on which version of the bible you read where's Mm -hmm. she in the mix what part does she play is she in heaven or is she in hell you gotta these are questions that need answers but unfortunately by the looks of things we're going to i don't think we're gonna have an answer we're gonna need to wait till at very least season two and i feel as though it's gonna pull us into even more questions with even fewer answers going forward we're gonna get answers that we've been asking in season one but then supplemented with two times more questions (laughs) going into season three but that is a good bait and switch, at the very least, with Pench's <laughs> ascending. He was not the one that I thought would do it. I thought he was. You don't kill the comedic relief without doing something more to him. And let's be honest, him going to heaven is freaking hilarious. So it's <laughs> right on character. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up before we close mm-hmm. it out here? Any other Not little really. loose ends that you want to address going forward? Not off the top of my head. Just what is I'm looking at I'm looking at Lilith's face right now. Just what is your deal? What is See, what is going on in your mind? Tell what is it. what is your major malfunction, brother? <laughs> That's just like okay. Well, hopefully we get some sort of confirmation as to what the what the heck is going on there. But I think that's where we're going to end it for now. Leave a comment down below with what you th- what you think is happening, your crazy crackpot theories as well. This was quite the ride. And even coupled with your vacation, this was very much worth the yeah. wait. So I'm all thrilled to see where this will go going forward. Expecting hell of a boss within like a week or so now. So that'll be interesting to see. You're unshackled from TikTok now. You can get back to that. I'm unshackled with other social media, so I can get back to that. So (laughs) we're free. We're free. We can continue on going. But that's where we're going to leave it for right now. Thank you for joining me for this first season. We'll be returning right back to Hell of a Boss and whenever season two drops. Check out the full release in the description down below. Check out all the links to my socials, to Mina's socials. I think she only has one, and that's her YouTube channel, so go check that out. Uh, Yeah, I think that's where we'll leave it. So with that being said, then, I'll see you guys when I see you guys. She'll see you guys when she sees you guys. And as always, toodles. Bye! Go away, Alistair. No, no. Is that any way to act after picking a fight with all of heaven and dooming everyone you love? I have enough on my mind Damn, without Alan. hearing your sadistic idea of a joke, asshole. Who's joking? Good. Oh. <laughs> oh, a captive audience downstairs waiting to hear what kind of inspiring performance you have planned next.